Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm going to be doing my July reading wrap up. I read a few books, I haven't actually counted the total yet. Um, I have some physical books and also some audio books, so I'm going to start off with the audio books now. I'm going to start off with the audio books first. Um, there's only three books that I actually have listened to but don't own the physical books for, um, and that's because I haven't actually been able to see the physical books anywhere. Um, that is the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I really enjoy these books. They were just what I was after um, because I was going into a bit of a slump when it came to the actual physical books. I found I was just struggling to have time to sit down and read. And these are one of those like fantasy romances that get you hooked. They're quite predictable, but very, very enjoyable. From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and also The Crown of Gilded Bones. Um, I'm really excited for the fourth book and I can't wait to read that one or listen to that one. So the Blood and Ash series follows a girl called Poppy. Um, she has a really sheltered life where she is known as the Maiden. She's not supposed to reveal her face to anyone. She's a very strict life and basically she just knows that her future is going to be something big. The people who are in charge of her have basically told her that um, their future is on her shoulders, that when she becomes of age she will go through the ascension where they become like eternal. Um, she doesn't really understand the process fully but she's been told this is what she's going to do from day dot and so that's the path that she decides to follow. However in her life it is quite lonely, she's not allowed to touch anyone, she's not allowed to talk to anyone except for her few closest friends and guards and the life just gets quite boring I believe. So Poppy decides that she's going to go and take a few risks before her ascension and that's when she runs into Hawk who is this attractive dangerous man that we all grow to love and he becomes one of her guards which starts to cause some implications because of their attraction to each other um, but as the story goes on you find out that the world that Poppy lives in is not as it seems and there are quite a few people who are deceiving her. I think that the plot for this is actually pretty great. Um, it did not go where I expected it to go in parts. Um, the romance in it is really good and I really like the characters and I just I liked it a lot more than I thought I would and I think it deserves all the hype that I have seen it get. The rest of these are kind of in no particular order because I don't really remember how I read them. I'm just going to grab them from the top of the pile and keep going. Um, so we've got The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This one is also a romance book. Um, I read quite a lot of romance this month because I really enjoy it. I think it's fun, easy reads and I'm a sucker for love and romance so I definitely have read a few of those. Um, so this one is about two roommates who share a flat. It is a one bedroom apartment which means they also share the bed. Um, it works out well because Leon, he works night shifts and the other character, Tiffy, works during the day so they don't actually see each other and it works out really well. They communicate through text messages and notes for each other and their lives do become intertwined and there is some romance involved as well. I probably gave this one, if I had to, it'd be like four and a half out of five stars. It was so cute and I enjoyed it. So the next one that I've got is called For the Wolf. This one is by Hannah Witten. I talked about this a little bit in my book haul video, um, but real quickly, it follows a girl called Red. She is the second daughter and so she always gets, she will get sacrificed to the wolf. Um, when this happens, you discover that the wolf is not who everyone believes and there might be a little bit of romance between them as you follow the world that the wolf is in and Red as well trying to get back home and then finding out that maybe her home isn't the place she believed it was. The next book I've got is the second book in the duology. Um, it is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. The first book is called King of Scars. Um, I don't need to talk about this one too much. It kind of follows around some of the characters from the Grishaverse. It was pretty average. It was really good to get back into the characters from the series. Um, and I really liked the opening that left it open for some potential new works, which is really exciting. The next ones that I've got is the first and second book. It is Sarina and the Sarina's Daughter. These are by Ellen Apston. And I really like these. They're historical fictions. Um, I did mention these as well. And they are pretty brutal in parts. It is pretty accurate with historically what happened, um, even though it's told in a fictionalised voice to make it a bit more readable. I don't know if I would say it's a romance per se. Um, there's definitely relationships throughout this book, but it's not this picture perfect romances. There's a lot of problems to overcome and there's a lot of dark themes to these, but um, if you like historical fiction, I definitely recommend these. Um, it has these strong female characters and as I said, it's pretty historically accurate so you can learn quite a bit as well. And the world it's set in is sometimes pretty beautiful, <laughs> um, but sometimes pretty grim as well. Uh, next up I have After Story. This one is by Larissa Berent. Um, I 
actually struggle to get into the physical book of this one, but I listened to the audio book and the cast for that is amazing and it made me really, really enjoy the book. It follows the story of a mother and a daughter as they go to London and follow a literary tour. So it follows some booky sides to it, um, but it also follows their own stories um, where in the past her sister ended up being kidnapped and then found dead. Um, so there are some darker themes to it and how this family is still battling the wounds from their childhood um, and the problems that have continued on in their lives from that. The next one I got, I actually did not finish this book. I tried to read the physical book and I also tried to listen to the audio book and I just didn't get sucked into either of these. It was the YA Book Club's Book of the Month. This is hosted by Dimmick Stundelup um, and the book that is is Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas. I just didn't enjoy this one and I don't think it's something that I will pick up in the future. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't a book that was really up my alley and I really struggled to enjoy the characters and because of that it was a struggle to kind of get sucked into the book. Unfortunately, like I've probably only managed to get like 50 or so pages in so I don't really have too much to say. I just wasn't feeling it and I don't have the urge to want to pick it up at a later date. So that is all the books that I have read in July. I think I read more than I expected to but I have been listening to audiobooks more often than not as I've just been that little bit too busy to actually sit down and read. I will quickly go over my to be read for this August month. I only have four books so far but I'm sure it's going to grow because I'm going to the bookstore on Friday. Um, so the first one is The Last Bookshop. This one is by Emma Young. This was supposed to be my July read but I just didn't get around to reading it. Um, it's to do with a bookstore which I'm really happy about because I really love books that are focused on literary um, occasions, places and people. So I'm intrigued to see what this one's going to be about. Uh, so it follows a girl called Kate Cooper who decides to open up a bookstore in the heart of the city. Um, she faces quite a few problems with that but also with some of her relationships and it just follows the story of her bookstore called Book Find. The next one I have got is a romance. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling and it's called A Touch of Darkness. This is by Scarlett St. Clair. I was recommended this one by quite a few people um, because I've been reading a lot of romance and I wanted a few more romance books to read. I don't really know what um, I'm getting into. I haven't read much about this one. I've pretty much just trusted people's opinions and got the book and it's probably going to be the next one on my, my read list um, because I want a bit of a reading pick-me-up and yeah hopefully it's good. The next one I've got I have seen recommended and that is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I once again don't really know much about this book but I believe from the cover it's going to be a pretty amazing fantasy. The Alexandrian society caretakers of lost knowledge from the greatest civilizations of antiquity are the foremost secret society of magical academics in the world. Those who earn a place among the Alexandrians will secure a life of wealth, power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams in each decade. Only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to be considered for initiation. Then we have six people where it goes into a description about each, which I will skip. Um, but when the candidates are recruited by the mysterious Atlas Blakey, they are told they will have one year to qualify for initiation. During which time they'll be permitted preliminary access to the society's archives and judged based on their contributions to various subjects of impossibility. Time and space, luck and thought, life and death. Five, they are told, will be initiated. One will be eliminated. The six potential initiates will fight to survive the next year of their lives. And if they can prove themselves to be the best amongst their rivals, most of them will. Most of them. It sounds like it's going to be pretty good. And the last one that I have has been on my bookshelf for a very long time. I'm actually quite surprised I haven't read it sooner. And that is Vicious by Viggy Schwab. I have heard amazing things about this book and everyone loves this author and I read pretty much every one of her other books. So I'm surprised I haven't read this one sooner, but I will get around to it this month, hopefully. So there you guys have my July wrap up and my August TBR. As always, if you guys have any book recommendations, leave them down below or just let me know what you're reading at the moment and hopefully I will get some more books to be reading in August. Thank you guys for watching and have a lovely bookish day. Terry. Terry. We talked about this.